Welcome back. And we continue our conversation with UWP leader Alan Chastney on his theory that St. Lucia's membership in ALBA has prompted backlash from the U.S. Prime Minister Anthony has said ALBA opens up new avenue for financing for St. Lucia. At a recent SLP constituency group meeting, he indicated that Dominica received up to $300 million for various projects under ALBA. But Alan Chastney says the conditions attached are troubling. It really comes down that you must earn your sovereignty, not, not demand it. And how do you earn sovereignty? By being viable. So the more you go into debt, the less sovereignty you have. And so all of a sudden, when you're looking at you know, a, a, a deficit right now of over $350 million, the bond markets are drying up, my income through taxation, I've taxed my people as, as far as I can go, there's no potential, where am I going to get money? Right? The Western world says you've got to be able to become more economically viable. You've got to be able to put policy in places which allow businesses to thrive in order to be able to pay the monies back. The alternative is you can go to Alba, you can borrow money, okay, and you're free to use it the way you want to and continue living the dream. But at the end of the day, the, the, the fundamentals of your economy are no better off. I mean, if you take, I mean, I don't want to use, uh, uh, there's an island that has gone to Alba, okay, and on the surface of it, everything looks great. But when you dig deep down into the economics of it, there's no private sector investment taking place. There's no growth in the economy. All the growth is being generated by the government. On what? On borrowed monies, which are into projects which are not generating any form of return. So we have got to sit down as a country and get serious and make those tough decisions about making our country economically viable. I mean, you and I have had this conversation for a long time. I've said the colonialization of today is economics, and economics has no conscience. So when you go broke, you know, like when Pan American Airlines went broke, it was the first airline in the world. There's no sentimentality. It was gone. When the USSR couldn't hold together anymore, for what? Not for political reasons, economic reasons. It disintegrated, the Berlin Wall. Okay, why? Economics. And so we've got to wake up to the reality of the order and we have to choose where we want to go. If you want to go into an organization like ALBA that's going to say we're anti-American, we're anti-the West and we believe that we should control our own resources, right? And that we're going to help you give you money that you're going to borrow but at some point you can pay it back. Is that a way to go? And that's not really coming to the people, it's going through a government. And the sad part is, why is Colombia not a member? Why is not Argentina a member? Okay? It's Bolivia, it's Ecuador, it's Nicaragua. But the vast majority of people in Central America and Latin America have shunned away from Alba. Even Brazil, which is considered you know, incredibly neutral. You know, Brazil has its issues with America. Mexico has its issues with America. They haven't seen it fit to go and do that. They have modern, modernizing their countries, becoming economically viable and becoming world powers of their own. To the extent that both Mexico and Brazil now are on the G20. They weren't even close to the world decision makings before because they had, when they had the G8 or the G7. So I'm sorry, I, I don't buy that philosophy and if you want to know that there's a substantial difference between the Labour Party and the United Workers Party, it's on this issue. What would you say if, and this is the big if, no other member of ABBA within our uh, sub-region faces U.S. sanctions, then what? I don't know, I mean, it's... it's Is the, it clear in your mind that the, there will be others to follow? I get the impression there will be. I get the impression... And if it doesn't happen? It doesn't happen. I mean, it's still, St. Lucia needs to go and get the situation resolved. So would As it I, still be an Alba issue? I think there's still always going to be an... Uh, there, Alba issue is more than just... Um, the sanctions, okay? I have a philosophical, or I say the party has a philosophical problem with ALBA in that, one, the rhetoric that they're spewing, um, two, uh, that nobody is accountable for the monies that are being taken. So you get the oil, you repatriate back 40% of the revenues from the oil, you keep 60%, that's considered a loan. Nobody's put any conditions to that. So none of the countries presently have had any conditions, right? and that we have a government who believes they don't need to come to Parliament. So is, is this more about oil than it has to do with a grouping? Is yeah. the U.S. more concerned 
that Venezuela is making oil so freely available and not having the people pay the, 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 up the hard currency up front. The feedback I'm getting, America is not concerned about Venezuela. Right? They believe, like the rest of the world, I mean, there was an article in The Economist, so this is you know, a general feeling around the world, that Maduro is going to have a difficult time. He won by a very slim margin. Um, the opposition is putting tremendous pressure on him. The e economy is collapsing. The refineries that they have are old, and the money is to, to reproduce them. The cost of producing oil for them is well above the world average. Um, and if what is happening in America where they're becoming self-sufficient in oil truly happens within the next two years and the price of fuel drops, okay, can uh, Venezuela continue going on? In addition to that, the opposition in Venezuela has said if they come to power, Alba is gone. So I think America and a lot of the Western countries in the world truly believe that it's just really a matter of time that Alba is going to collapse. Right? So why, why pressure now if it's just going to uh, self-destruct? Uh in a matter of time. You have to ask the Americans that question. I don't know. But all I can say to you is that don't come back and blame it on the, the, the killings by the police. I think they're, again, a contributing factor. I don't think by themselves they would have caused the U.S. government to put the sanctions that they have put on. So there are other contributing factors. And as I said to you, you know, countries work in funny ways. Sometimes they do things and it's really just to say, as I said to you, fire across a uh, shot across your bow to say, hello, come and see me. Right, let's sit down and have a discussion. And I'm hoping that the government today is savvy enough to, to realize that and quickly accedes and goes and meets them in Barbados or get them to come here or whatever. But the fact is an opportunity was afforded to them to meet with the vice president in Trinidad. So I would imagine at this point it's going to take them having to go up to Washington, D.C. to meet with them, but to get this matter resolved. The crux of the UWP's debate is based on the introduction of the Countering Alba Act of 2013 in the U.S. Congress. Backed by two House representatives, the act has been referred to committee stage. It has a 4% chance of passing through committee stage and a 2% chance of being enacted. In Section 2 of the act, definitions, the term Alba countries is defined as Venezuela, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and Ecuador. The act speaks to human rights violations in Alba countries, with emphasis on political victimization, killings and unlawful imprisonment, restrictions on press freedoms, internet access, and undemocratic practices. Among the sanctions is the withdrawal and denying of U.S. visas to officials of Alba, Alba government, described once again as Venezuela, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and Ecuador. However, the Countering Alba Act is yet to be enacted. Washington is being lobbied by the, by the powerful anti-Castro Cuban American community. If in fact what the Prime Minister said in his speech was correct, right, that the, the relationship he has with the U.S. is sacrosanct and that the, the funds that they receive in terms of support for security is in very, very important to the, to, the, to the country, okay? You would have to think these things out. So I cannot believe that a government and particularly a prime minister that are experienced as they are would make such a junior mistake. So the fact is, is that we are taking actions and I personally believe that this is a salvo to our bow, to say, hey, come see us and get these things resolved because we're uncertain as to where you're going, right? Because it is, it is activities within the last six to eight months that's, that's, tip, that's tipped the scale here. And, do you, and you believe that with the prime minister not attending that meeting in Trinidad with uh, Vice President Joe Biden, uh, you speak about a shift, a dramatic shift in the voting pattern at the UN that these two uh, strong enough to have the US become s so drastic well, in its the, action? There's a third change. The third change is that Hillary Clinton is no longer the Secretary of State and John Kerry is. And obviously with every change of a Secretary of State comes a change in policy. So whereas maybe Hillary Clinton may be deemed as being more laissez-faire, John Kerry is not. And so, you know, it's for us to understand that. So, look, this can be 
a catastrophic step for solution if it is not dealt with immediately. And what do I mean by that? I don't think St. Lucians clearly understand the extent that our police force depends on the U.S. government as to how many millions of dollars that are pumped into our police force, both here locally, the radar systems, the regional support, everything else. St. Lucia cannot afford, because we don't have any replacement to that right now. Not even from the U.K. and, and Canada and other sources. Nobody. People will not be able to match up. There's nobody who's going to be able to match up to that. There's no one. You know, and this can, if left unbated, and I'm talking about, you know, no more than six months, that could, we could start seeing that our sec security is going to be compromised. But we've seen all of these other islands be part of ALBA, and we have certainly not heard of any such actions taken against the administration. Well, yet. Um, there is a bill um, that is being presented by both a Democrat and a Republican that is calling for official sanctions by the U.S. government against ALBA states. Now, I think that the U.S. government was sitting back because ALBA was designed, and you know, people try to think I don't understand the difference between ALBA and Petro-Carib. ALBA is the policy agreement, Petro-Carib is the commercial agreement. But they're too intertwined. You cannot access Petro-Carib But one came before the other. It, ALBA, Alba came was first. in existence ALBA before. is a replacement because Chavez was upset with the OAS. Okay? And that he felt that the OAS was a pawn of the U.S. government. And that he wanted to be able to develop an organization that was truly a Central a Caribbean, Central America, and um, Latin American group. The vast majority of the members of Central America, Latin America, and Caribbean were not members of ALBA and still are not members of ALBA. There seems to be a common thread. Countries that are in dire need of cash are the ones that are going to ALBA in order to be able to get access to petro -Carib. And I think that there, you know, some people have not adopted all of the hardcore rhetoric because ALBA was clearly an, a, a, an entity to be anti-American. So what is the threat in wanting to be part of a grouping where you can be able to source uh, funding for your, 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 your nations, be able to access certain support mechanisms. Where's the threat in that for the U.S.? The threat is, is that this is in the belly of America. So the ties to ALBA and Iran and Syria and deeper terrorist groups, um, the, the, the rhetoric that's practiced. So all of a sudden to become a member of ALBA Dominica signed an agreement that said that they were going to kick USAID out of their country. So what's that? I mean, when you become part of the Western society, World Bank, IMF, CDB, because there's so much funnies that are pun in CDB, there's no conditionalities other than financial conditionalities. So we're getting into a grouping that's now trying to dictate to us how we need to vote. And clearly it's working because the same ALBA countries are voting in pattern at the UN. All right now, if you're the US, you have to sit back and look at all these things and you have to ask yourself, what's going on? Now, would you continue supporting a country? So if in fact, I can join ALBA and it's not going to impact the US, I'm all for it. If I'm going to join ALBA and there may be some, you know, points that we have to debate and get worried out, then I'm all for it. But if it's going to be a point where I have to make a choice between do I stay where I am or now join ALBA and lose what I have, then I have to sit back and take a stronger consideration of the decisions I'm making. Now, and more importantly, should any government, should any cabinet of any country have the power to make that decision by themselves? And in essence, that is what this government has said. In the response to my, my questions, right, I was told that there's no difference between ALBA and the CTO or FAO. I mean, this is absurd. This is disgusting that a government would believe that people would be so stupid that you're going to go to Petrocab, you're going to borrow money that you don't have to come to Parliament after when you were in opposition, you made so much noise over the Taiwanese funds as to whether it was public funds or not public funds. And in those cases with the Taiwanese funds, it was grant. This is a case where you're getting money that you're borrowing. There's a commitment that's being made to the country. So, you know, I have grave concerns 
And I think all St. Lucians should have grave concerns in the way that our business is being conducted and the decisions that are, that are being made for us without our consultation.